Hi all, glad you could join me for yet another Thursday Tips and Tricks. Uh, today we're gonna work with uh, learning our, our tuckerizing lessons working with the shaded four patch unit. And this may be a unit that you've avoided in the past. Uh, it looked too difficult, took too much time. I'm gonna reveal the secret of how we make the shaded four patch unit and how you can fall in love with it the same way that we have. Now, to start our lesson, I need to get behind the camera. So let me get over here and reposition for our horizontal surface. Um, first of all, you should realize not everybody calls this a shaded four patch unit. It goes by a number of different names and you can see them there. It goes by birds in the air, cat's cradle, a um, hidden square, Mary's triangle, and sometimes it's just unit A or unit B in a, in a pattern or a magazine. Uh, essentially, it is a square. It's a square that is composed of a small square, two small triangles, and a large triangle. Most patterns will have you build those units by cutting each of those shapes individually, cutting them precisely, and then going on to reconstruct them into the units with absolute perfect uh, construction techniques, perfect positioning and stitching and pressing. Well, that's what makes it challenging if you're trying to do it that way. Let's take a look at what we're going to be using for this particular unit. We've identified this unit. It's on our unit guide. It's called the shaded four patch and it's a technique sheet. So you're going to need to get that, but it's a, also a unit that we work with our Tucker trimmer one or our Tucker trimmer three. And don't let the colors in uh, the unit confuse the issue. These two units are exactly the same. Here, the square and the large triangle are the dark value. Here, it's the two small triangles that are the darkened value. Here, you've got a third color built in. You might even see it with all four colors. So don't let the coloring confuse you. Identify that it is a tucker, that it is a shaded four patch and that you will be using the tucker trimmer tool. Let's take a look at what you might see in books and patterns and magazines. In this book, Michelle Linder proposes making the shaded four patch units by starting with four separate individual squares and going through a process that is not extremely efficient and it also is pretty wasteful. So I would not make my shaded four patches using Michelle's methods. However, her fantasy blocks give me oodles of great ideas for future block projects that incorporate the shaded four patch unit. The book is called Square Magic and it's by Michelle Linder. And if you can still find it, it's a great one to add to your library. This is what you might also see. The current magazine here uses indeed that shaded four patch unit. It proposes that you build first an economy block, a square, inside of a square, inside of a square, and then take that economy block and slice it north and south and east and west and telling you you'll have four shaded four patch units. Well, the accuracy on that is gonna be suspect and that's definitely not the method that I would choose. And when we look at this next magazine, you're gonna see that this is what most um, writers are proposing. Cut each of the shapes, the square, small triangles, and large triangles individually, and then put it together perfectly. Well, that adds a level of stress that I don't really want to put in my sewing um, and quilting days that I uh, and projects. So let me give some credit where credit is due. Before I share with you our method, what I want to do is give credit to a couple of ladies who were instrumental in helping me formulate our shaded four patch techniques. The first gal is Sal Sally Snyder. Back in 1994, she wrote this book and she proposed a very uh, innovative method for creating these shaded four patch units. She happens to call them Mary's triangles, but instead of cutting triangles, she actually creates these units with squares and rectangles. I'm going to show it to you briefly. Basically, you'll cut two squares, cut two rectangles, cut a large rectangle, begin to strip, begin to sew a square to a rectangle, invert one of them, stitch them together along there to create a pieced rectangle. That pieced rectangle, you turn it over, whoops, and you actually 
mark a couple of stitching lines, and those stitching lines are gonna go right through that seam intersection. You'll take the pieced rectangle, place it on top of the unpieced rectangle, proceed to stitch on the lines, and when you cut down the middle, sure enough, you are gonna actually end up with two shaded four patch units about as quick as possible, and I think Sally deserves a gold star for this. What an innovative way to create these. A couple years after Sally introduced this technique, a gal by the name of Deb Caffrey created in her Scraps to You 2 book another process, another part of the process that I incorporated into our Oops, into our shaded four patch technique. And that's where she said, how about instead of cutting individual squares and individual rectangles, we do strip piecing. That makes perfect sense. So we subcut, have those units. She went on to proceed to build these with a slightly different method, similar but slightly different. But that strip piecing is what I thought was brilliant and wanted to incorporate in my process. And you know, both of these were innovative and they were both great ideas, but both of them expected me to piece everything perfectly, to do all the construction, the, the cutting, the positioning, the stitching, the pressing. And again, it builds a level of stress into our processes, into our, our quilt making that I know can be avoided by simply oversizing. So with our shaded four patch technique sheet, you've got 21 different sizes. You do the strip piecing. We also layer our strips together to increase our efficiency. We do the layering of a piece rectangle on top of a plain rectangle. And it's the most efficient method, but because our shapes at the beginning are oversized, our strips and our rectangles, our unit is oversized, giving me the opportunity to come back with the tucker trimmer, place one diagonal guideline on the diagonal seam and the other diagonal right through the, the intersection at the middle and ending up with perfect units that help me go on to build better quilts. So there you've got the gist of it. And let's take a look at a specific project. The link is below. It's for a block that's called a kindred block. And this project proposes that, yes, you do indeed make two different types of shaded four patch units. But, and you have choices of three inch, six inch, or nine inch sizes. But what they're having you do is cut all the shapes individually and put them together. To tuckerize, you need to figure out what size unit you want to make. For a six inch block, you'll use a three inch unit. For the three inch block, it'll be a one and a half inch unit. And for the nine inch block, it'll be a four and a half inch. And that's the finished size of the units. Consult the shaded four patch technique sheet for the size build these units, and the block itself is actually constructed of just those two units put side by side together. They show it in two colors. It's pretty in two colors, but think about this as a possible future scrap quilt. I think this is gonna be on my bucket list because I like making the units and using up scraps makes me extra happy. So the link for this is below. It's called the Kindred Block. And if you're looking for some other projects that you can build with the Shaded Four Patch Unit, on our website, we have two free downloadable projects, Twilight Paths and the Shaded Four Patch Runners, that are gonna allow you to practice easily your Shaded Four Patch techniques. And we have also put out a number of fantastic patterns that incorporate the shaded four patch into their designs. I'm gonna flip the camera back up and move out in front and show you those. Let's get there and let's get refocused. There we go. And if you look at the first pattern, it's called Grand Illusion. It's over here on the left. The blocks do indeed have the shaded four patch. They're pretty small in this one. Uh, Lucky, Lucky Lemoyne's has Lemoyne stars, but it also has alternating blocks that are built with the shaded four patch unit. This is called Pleiades. 
uses again the shaded four patch unit as part of its design. It falls in our modern quilt category. This is our lint quilt. It's a different color version than what's on the front cover. The front cover project was actually on the front cover of Fonz and Porter magazine several years ago. It incorporates those shaded four patch units into the alternating blocks and everything's tuckerized in our patterns. This is called Marrakesh. The corners of the blocks are again made with the shaded four patches. They've kind of hidden in there and the free ones, you are the ones that you see up top there. So I get the, you can probably tell, I absolutely love this unit. It gives you some very visually exciting designs. I'm hoping that you start to incorporate it into your future projects. And when you're ready to give it a try, visit our website, watch our educational video. We'll, we'll take you step-by-step step through the construction processes. And while you're there, take a look at our shaded nine patch video. That's a step above and beyond what we did here, but it's got a lot of the same elements in it. Not hard, but tons of fun. So there you have it, shaded four patches. The magic and the secret is revealed. You'll never be afraid of it again. And hopefully you'll join me in about two weeks for our next Tucker Rising video, where we're gonna deal with probably the most famous unit that's in the quilting world. And it's the one that's probably the most despised. I'll see you soon in a couple weeks. Till then, take care, have fun, and look for those shaded four patch units.